Uh, I guess, um, what do you take out of that? Um, you know, most people expected for you to beat West Coast, yeah. How yeah, and I think that that was um, on where both clubs have been at and, and, and are at. I think that's that was a reasonable expectation. We're playing at home. We had an expectation upon ourselves that that we could win the game, um, and then we um, you know, we played I think we played pretty dominant football. We just probably didn't get all the rewards that we were we were hoping for in some ways. But you know, we, you take 50 points every day of the week. Hot round one, West Coast last year in their first two games, very strong. You know, and they they're growing their brand. Just the spread of contributors, the weight of numbers that you had, you must be wrapped with that because it seemed, seemed like almost everyone chipped in at some certain stages, didn't they? Yeah, it was pretty even. I think everyone, you know, you know, again, the, the whole team's been waiting for a while to have a have a have a, a proper game, you know, a points game, and they, um, you know, they all demonstrated that they had hunger and appetite for for round one, which you expect would be the case. So, yeah, I was really pleased that they all joined in. Just so that you guys have, you know, um, some impact as well. It must mm. be kind of nice. I guess you're still probably waiting to see how. They make the team better, yeah. you know, that kind of thing, but, you know, they don't yeah, have impact. I think that's a really fair comment that you make in there, Simeon, where you say we're still waiting to see. I mean, today was a great starting point for all three boys. You know, highlighted um, why why Jason went after the, the, the boys that we needed. And, um, you know, they all showed today little bits of helping us get better, I think. And that's what we looked at that through the, the off-season. We looked at the places where we needed to make some gains. And, you know, those three boys have certainly added to that in round one. So it's a long way to go, but it was a nice start by all three. Given two of them couldn't, let's say Cat has played ruck in the past, that Ivan's you know, looked very good in the ruck, and even Jordan Sweet, who is in the ruck. How big is that for a guy like Charlie Dixon, who you know may not have to do as much rucking as he has in you know previous years, and then he looked really good today. Yeah, that's the hope. That's the hope that Char I mean, Charlie's at a, a stage in his career, not nowhere, you know, hopefully not right at the end, but he's uh, you know he's at a point in his career where we need to look after him. We looked after him through the, the off season. We we're very mindful about how much training we needed him to do. Look, is he absolutely 100% flying right now? I would say no, but that was deliberate by us and by the conditioning team to make sure we could get as many games from Charlie this year. But as you said, in the ruck support certainly makes a um, makes his job a little easier. He's the first one to still put his hand up and want to chop out in the ruck, though, because he quite likes playing in there, which is a bit strange. Is he, he seemed quite look physically pretty well. He, he spent a fair time of... Uh, the, a fair time on ground as well. So were you a bit surprised at how well he fit the lasted today physically? No, nah, not, re not really, because he's... he's a, He's a pretty big endurance beast. He can actually handle a lot. Of, and he's played his whole career with probably one rotation a half at best, and that's the way he's always played. So he has a way. I mean, his size helps him manage his conditioning, I reckon, because they stay pretty close to him. So he, he gets to determine how much movement he has to do. How did you see your, your, your back mix with, with two key inclusions? Well, I think we were, um, we were pretty positive most of the time. You know, there's some there's room. Look, there's room to improve. There's plenty of room to improve. But I think that um, <clears throat> the, the two tools that we brought in helped Alir Alir be dominant. You know, it, it, it helps uh, Lockie Jones feel strong and safe as a, as a, a young emerging defender and, and allows our running backs, allows us to get Burton a little bit more up the ground. And Farrell and Houston are all quite damaging together. But I think they all both showed that they'll certainly help us. His stoppages, I mean, are they, are they different with Ivan? Is, is, is he, what does he bring that... that, that well... <sighs> You know, we don't go too hard because we battle hard in that position for the last couple of years. But um, you know, we had 18 hitouts to advantage today, which is a significant number for us, and um, that that helps. I mean, uh, Williams battles really hard. But he's a little undersized, so you know, next week um, for Ivan, there'll be another great test against his former side, and um, you know, their captain, who's a great player. So um, I think today was a, a nice sample for him to show that he's got plenty to offer. And 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 the good part is he hit the scoreboard, and I think that's also very. Really really exciting for us that we can use him up front as well as in the ruck. Captain C seems to agree with Connor. Yeah, it wasn't too bad today. <laughs> seemed to be okay. I thought Zach and Connor both both delivered, you know, I think there were something like 27, 28 touches, two goals to Connor, one goal to Zach, 14 score involvements for Connor, 12 for Zach. I mean, I thought they went arm in arm as they've done the entire time at Port Adelaide. Um, they've got a long, long way to go in their journey, but, you know, ultimately as young leaders, they displayed football form first and then leadership comes along with that, so good on them both. Zach was involved in a couple of bumps. One, you know, he dissed out one, he got on the end. When he, you see someone, you know, choose the bump, is there almost a bit of heart and mouth now, given we know what, you know, how the MRO can come down on it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think you've got to be careful. I mean, you don't, you shouldn't probably elect a bump unless you really have to, I think, unless you're bracing to protect yourself, which sometimes he's only pretty little. He, he may do that a little bit, but, you know, he's learning the art of making sure that he doesn't make too many mistakes in that area because we don't certainly want any of our players, including Zach, 
um, out of the out of the contest for very long when it comes to suspension. We prefer that not to ever happen. So how has it changed the, having the new captain and vice captain? How has it changed the dynamic? I know Tom missed a lot of footy last year, but. But just a little insight into what sort of... They don't look like the rant and rave type leaders, but what, what sort of personalities are they putting... No, in? I think we've said right from the start when they were appointed, they they complement each other. Zach's a little bit more straight at it and uh, Connor's a little bit more um, caring in, in some ways. But I think that the... The other two that were out there today, I think we, um, you know, support, the support they got from Drew and the, the support they get from Houston was also really important. It's a young leadership group. We, we acknowledge that, but we thought it was the right time to, to uh, challenge the group to grow together a little bit more again. And you know, Ollie and Trav and those older, Aaliyah, those senior players, Charlie, th they all add to that group. But the young boys know um, the reality is, and I always say, this, play well first, and then you know, lead second if that's if that's fair to say for me. I think that's what I, I've always believed. Was McEntee concussed or just... Yeah, he was ruled out of the game with concussion, so he'll miss a couple of weeks and, well, miss next week at least and then go through the protocols and we will take every care we should to make sure he's right and he'll return when he's well. It's kind of weaker milestones going into the Richmond game, Travis 350th, your 250th. How do you kind of... Do you do anything special in the week? You know, how do you kind of approach you know, two pretty much big well, I think, games? I think, uh, one, you know, we should certainly acknowledge that Travis, particularly at, at 350 games of football, is a remarkable number of football and he's been the reason um, in some ways he's the reason that Port Adelaide um, almost still around it might be a big, bit too rich to go with but you know, if you think right back to when he started I've been lucky enough to coach Trav in you know, 240 of those games or something so I've um, been blessed to have coached him for that long period of time I think the important thing for us is as it always is in any milestone game perform well, play well make sure you represent the club well and then celebrate later but the lead up to that shouldn't be missed on how many games 350 is. It's a remarkable number. You know, go through the people who have been able to achieve such a big number. Trav's a, a star of our footy club and a star of the game. Was there any, or is there any temptation to make sure he has it at Adelaide Oval? I guess you know he's got he's from Victoria, but it's probably. I'll let you ask him if he wants to miss. <laughs> it's funny how many games you play and the amount of football you play. They, they, they're competitive people. They don't want to miss any games of football. And um, you know, Trav's from Victoria, so to celebrate it, and I always say this to him every game he plays now is celebrate with the people who have been around you for a long period of time and uh, you know the people who are sitting in the stands they're going to enjoy it probably more than Travis will enjoy it his family will enjoy it more his mum will enjoy it more um, but Trav's going out there to make sure they get a moment to uh, to enjoy it and I'm not going to be the one to, to crash the party and say you're not going to Melbourne. <laughs> and yourself do you kind of do any reflect anything special this week? Plenty of people reflect for me so I don't need to do much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>